Hey there, how's it going? This is James Tripp. Another video for James Tripp Chaos Wave. I'm looking disheveled, kind of like uh, unshaven stuff. I might be regressing. It's possible I'm regressing. I'm reading uh, Yuval Noah Harari's Sapiens, and it may have led to some sort of uh, regression to a more primitive form. However, that's not going to stop me using modern technology to make this YouTube video. It's a follow-up, in a sense, to the video I put out the other day. I think I called it the power switch, probably ought to know. Um, but I've got a question come up on this video, the power switch. Am I looking at the camera? Yeah, I am. So the question was from Jay. Jay said, greetings, James, after many years, 35, in fact, and many dollars spent on diets, books, personal trainers, hypnotherapy, and NLP practitioners, I'm still binging on sugary carbs and a 15 kilograms overweight. I decided I might have a better result if I did NLP training and have done practitioner two years ago and have Master Prac coming up in January. Um, cool stuff. I'm a big fan of NLP, as people who watch this regularly probably know. It was life-changing for me studying NLP many years ago. Uh, a lot of great stuff in there. So Jay's going on to say, I've learned many useful tools, learning about NLP, and I've been able to practice on and help friends and colleagues with some of their issues, but alas, I've not been able to have self-mastery in this area, okay? So the last video we, I did, I was talking about self-mastery. He's saying, I haven't been able to have self-mastery in this area. Um, I have many people in my life who struggle with obesity and type two diabetes. And I would like to be able to say there is hope you can change. I did, and if I can, anyone can. I've ordered your book. That's the Hypnosis Without Trance book. So thank you, Jay, for the plug there. You can get that from Amazon. And I'm reading as much NLP-related info as I can. Also books on addition, addiction, such as Gabon Mate. Any words of wisdom or guidance would be much appreciated. Okay, so this video is about my words of wisdom and guidance and i'm not going to give you a definitive answer jay or to anybody watching this but i am going to give you an answer that you may not have got anywhere else okay and as much as i've just said i love nlp i really value nlp it was life-changing for me it shaped my whole career not that i like that term um but it's not without its limitations you know, it comes from, NLP comes from a mindset, it comes from a reality tunnel. It's a very human thing. And so when it comes from a reality tunnel, what it does is it sees things from that place, it sees things through that reality tunnel, it does not see what it does not see. Okay, it does not come from paradigms other than the paradigm that it comes from. So for that reason, just like anything else, it has its limitations. Now, there's a presupposition in NLP, however, which says if what you're doing doesn't work, do something different, anything different. Now, the point of that is because NLP itself attempts to recognize that we can get caught in preconceived ideas about solutions. Right? And if we try and logically come up with another way of solving the problem, we're still actually unconsciously coming from the same presuppositions that are continuing to create or perpetuate it. Right? So NLP recognizes this within itself. But um, I'm just thinking about an, an NLP in-joke, which some will get and some won't. I'm not going to explain it. That somebody, somebody shared with me many, many years ago, which is NLP has regrettably got stuck in its own first position. So NLPers, particularly new code NLPers, might appreciate that joke. So I'm not saying don't do NLP, do the NLP, get everything you can from the NLP, there's a lot of richness in there. However, let me go back to what you've said here and what we can ascertain from this. Because you've obviously been trying things that are different. Do something different, I just said, anything different. So you've tried diets, uh, books, you've tried personal trainers, you've tried hypnotherapy, you've tried NLP practitioners, but you're still binging on carbs. Now, it probably seems to you like, that you, like you've done a lot of different things. But what I'm going to suggest to you is perhaps you've been coming from the same paradigm 
over and over again. And it's one that seems to make sense. Um, there's another video that I was going to do, probably end up conflating them now because the ideas in my mind of um, it's an old piece of Chinese wisdom that I learned when I was studying Chinese martial arts many years ago, which is in order to profit, you must invest in loss. I .e. whatever you're currently holding on to is keeping you from what it is that you want if it's not already getting you what you want. So here is the big paradox here. What seems to be the common thread here is that you've been trying to solve this problem. Now, what if you did the opposite of that? And before you jump in and think, well, what's the point of not trying to solve the problem? That's not the opposite I'm talking about. What if the opposite is instead of trying to solve the problem, you let the problem solve you? Okay, you let the problem solve you. What if, what if, as uh, George Gurdjieff, I believe, observed, nothing happens to you, it happens for you? What if, to use a phrase from um, Ram Dass, Richard Alpert, what if this is grist for the mill for you? What if this is the thing that you need to learn something about who you are and how you are, to witness yourself more profoundly, to come to know thyself, as it says above the door of the Temple of Apollo, to know thyself more profoundly, okay? So often we can get so caught up in trying to change something that we, that we fail to observe it, to really look at it, to see what is there. My father was an engineer He's retired now, I guess maybe he's still an engineer in spirit, but he always used to say to me, when you want to solve a problem, the first step is to look to see what's there. We rush at changing it. We think we know what's what. We think we know why it's bad, why it needs to be different, all of this. We think, what's the method I can apply to change this? And we don't look to see what's there. But what I'm suggesting here, and by the way, look, I said in order to profit, you must invest in loss. I thought I was stuck for years in a change work paradigm. I was a professional change work practitioner for years, right? Up until very, very recently. I probably talk about this elsewhere, but I recently quit doing the work with the military veterans once and for all. I said, look, I'm out. I've got to get out of this. And the reason I got out is because I was stuck in this change work paradigm. And I love doing developmental work. And people go, well, change work, developmental work, they're not that different, are they? In what way are they different? Okay, transformation is just a fancy word for change. I'll tell you how they're different. Change work is often quick and dirty. It's got this idea there's a problem, we've got to fix it. Okay, but it is through the problems of our life that we have the opportunity to grow and develop, to truly develop. Think about it like this. If you were learning mathematics, and you were under the tutelage of a mathematics professor, that mathematics professor would set you progressively more challenging problems. Okay, those problems would be there for one reason and one purpose only, not because they needed solving, but they were there to develop you as a mathematician, to deepen your understanding, to deepen your knowledge, to deepen your mathematics consciousness. Okay, so, for myself, before I rush to change something, I take the opportunity to really, really observe it. Really observe it, really bring high levels of consciousness to it. Not high levels of willpower to struggle with it, right? I often give myself permission to not change it, to not change it before rushing into change it. In fact, I may have talked about this, uh, I can't remember what I've talked about where because I spent so much time on Zoom doing group coaching and these sorts of things. I had a few bouts of insomnia over the last few years. The last one, I could only solve by giving it complete permission to remain, okay? Maybe this is just wrangling my unconscious mind, but I changed my view of it. And so instead of seeing it as a problem that was in the way uh, in the way of me progressing in my life, which it really seemed like. 
because it seemed like I couldn't work, I couldn't think straight because I wasn't getting the sleep that I needed. My goodness, this is a real problem. It's undermining my health, it's undermining my work. I got to change this now. Now I knew enough to know that like what I was doing wasn't working and not just what I was doing in terms of my physical action, but the way I was thinking about it and the way I was seeing it. I knew I had to invest in loss. So I looked at where I was creating struggle inside of myself and I changed the frame, I changed the game. So, and I wrote this clearly in my journal, you know, I give complete permission for this insomnia to remain until I have learned what it is that I need to learn from it. Now, listen to the presupposition inside of that. Learn what I need to learn from it. This is not trying to change the problem. This is letting the problem change me. Assuming it is grist for the mill. Assuming that it is the grit of sand in the oyster that's going to allow a new pearl of wonders and wisdom or whatever it might be to emerge. Okay? So there's a real opportunity here. What is it that's actually happening? And I'm not talking about, I've got to find this out quickly because I need to change this. Not, not that sense of pressure or hurry or anything. What's happening? What feelings am I experiencing in my body? Okay, what does it represent? What does the choice to binge on sugary carbs represent? What might you be chasing through that? And I don't mean like, you know, get a positive intention so you can run a quick process to resolve it. I mean, like really come to know deeply what it is that that sugary carb binging represents for you. What does it mean for you? What are you looking to attain? Don't judge this. Do not judge this, okay? Judgment is never transformational, okay? So you, you want to bring that equanimity to it witness it in a transformative way, in a way that allows yourself to see it, bring that spotlight of consciousness to it. Um, learn, what might you be believing? What might you be falling for all the time? Look deeply, know deeply, use your felt sense. Okay, I use felt sense a lot, I'm not gonna go into that here. I use what I call Sherlocking which is going through a process of making inferences about what I must be believing and then using felt sense to check that in. And again, the important thing here is you might think, James, you're talking about change work stuff. I need to know how to do this. Change almost inevitably occurs as a result of this process. It's a non-linear process. It doesn't select the goal at the, the front end and aim for it. That's a linear process. It goes deep into the matrix of the system with a witness consciousness, bringing a certain being to it to allow transformation to occur. Now, the place that the transformation occurs when you do this kind of work is within yourself, who you are and how you are. It is not that you merely remain unchanged, but you no longer have the problem of binge eating. And all else about who you are and how you are is the same. This is why developmental work is terrifying for some people, because it means losing some of who you were in order to allow who you are becoming to come through. And that's an article of faith there that that's going to be a better you. So that is a developmental answer, not a change work answer. And that's what you're going to get from me, all right? Do not take that on face value. Do not think James knows NLP doesn't have the answer. Maybe you go out there, you'll find a change work practitioner. Maybe you'll find an old school hypnotist bang you into trance, give you direct suggestions and out will pop the change. I'm not saying that's not a possibility. I'm just saying you haven't found it yet, have you? And you've, how long was that? How many years was that you've been looking? A long time, right? A long time, 35 years. Okay, 35 years. Um, I just say from a personal perspective, I was a lifelong carb binger. There was no moment of, of suddenly it, it's gone. But there was a moment of me coming to know more deeply what was occurring, what my carb binging trance was about, how it felt, how I experienced it, going deep into the underpinnings, what I call the matrix that sits below that trance. All of it non-linear, all of it from a place of allowing new behaviors to emerge. You'll learn about that in NLP as well, because that's, that's there in the six-step reframe in NLP. 
you know, it's that point of the unconscious mind developing new, new solutions. But the, the problem with it is, the problem, one of the big problems with NLP, and it came about for a reason, okay? So Banner and Grinder and, and Frank Fuselick and the crew, they were developing something as a sort of antidote to old school, long form, 10 years in therapy, okay? But sometimes we throw the baby out with the bathwater. So NLP becomes so much about rushing, rushing, rushing. You've got patterns called a swish, right? You've got Bandler talking about the importance of speed and rapidity and change. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes that's useful stuff. It's useful to, useful to be able to work with those dynamics. But it's also important to recognize that sometimes developmental processes take a little time. Oak trees don't pop out of, uh, out of acorns just because somebody swished them, okay? Conditions need to be there for the tree to grow. And rushing that, forcing that, pushing that, trying to make that oak tree grow right now, doesn't necessarily get you there. So I hope that this has got a perspective inside of it for you, uh, Jay, that is stimulating at the very least. I know it probably raises more questions than answers, right? And that's another feature sometimes of developmental work versus change work. When people are engaging in change work, they want quick answers, quick solutions, rapid answers. They don't want more questions. They don't want deeper questions. They don't want to have to look in a whole new arena full of a whole new load of unknowns. They don't. That's one of the differences between developmental work and change work. But the real fruits often come from looking in those places you've never looked before. Even if it's more challenging, even if it's more difficult, even if it means investing in loss. So if you're watching this, Jay, and you appreciate this, give it a thumbs up. If anyone else is watching this, you got something from this, please do give it some love, hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet to the channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. Um, we have ongoing conversations about personal alchemy, about generative sense making, about the nexus of mind and life. And you can use the comment section below to ask the questions you wanna ask, and maybe you too will get a video response just like this one.